Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I wanna do a more head-to-head -head comparison of the ALP versus the TMG. Uh, the TMG, of course, it's a new laser jammer that's coming out of the market looking very promising, and ALP has, well, long been the top dog. And uh, I've done some video of, or other videos the past couple days talking about the TMG, and I wanna do a, a closer comparison between the two jammers. Uh, now, in a nutshell, what we're looking at, ALP, it's gonna be, uh, it's got more features, and it's a more effective laser jammer overall. Uh, the TMG, it's going to be a better bang for the buck. Uh, it's a simpler laser jammer. It doesn't have quite all the same bells and whistles. And we're also seeing a difference. Uh, the ALP is a much more mature product. It came out in 2013, five years ago. Uh, whereas the TMG, it's still very, very new. And the guys making the TMG are working fast and furious on uh, developing new features, improving the jamming capabilities, fixing bugs, uh, making some hardware changes, even things like that. So there's a lot of changes here. So they're in very different stages of their life cycle. But uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the two different systems. Now, before we get into that, I wanna make a correction in my uh, original TMG overview video that I made. Uh, I had misquoted the price on the ALP. Uh, the set of duals were correct. They start at 749 uh, and 949 if you add Hi-Fi and Bluetooth. But uh, if you want a set of quads, that actually starts at 1249. And if you add Hi-Fi and Bluetooth, it's 1449. I had misquoted the price of the quads by 200 bucks. And I had no idea that was completely my mistake. And I didn't realize it until you guys had actually pointed it out. I was trying to figure out why I did that. And the only thing I could think of was uh, when you add Hi-Fi and Bluetooth, uh, it's another $200, and I must have just mistakenly thought that was the price without them, not with them. And so, uh, yeah. Um, speaking of the price of the Hi-Fi, that was something that was a little bit confusing for you guys as well. Uh, if you're building out your ALP, if you take a look at one of the options, if you add that Hi-Fi, uh, it's $99. However, if you go to uh, look at the Hi-Fi module itself, that's $120. And the reason that they're showing two different prices for the Hi-Fi is uh, the fact that if you buy the ALP with the Hi-Fi, you don't also need the uh, extra like standard control pad. This is mine. I bought Hi-Fi separately, so I had my original control pad, and then I swapped it out with the, uh, the updated Hi-Fi module, so I've still got the original one, which has just kind of been sitting in my closet. Not used, but I guess handy for videos when I can use it as a prop. Um, but if you're buying the ALP out of the gate and you get the Hi-Fi with it, you can save $20 by uh, buying it as a package, and then you don't need the original control pad. So that's why you see a difference in pricing there. Now, with the price of the ALP quads being uh, $200 less than what I had said in the original video, that does reduce the uh, price discrepancy. And, uh, you know, it's not as big of a spread as I had thought initially. Now, that said, I was talking with TMG well, earlier today about a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be sharing with you guys here. Uh, and they're saying they're actually wanting to lower the price of the TMG, uh, well, even lower than where it is now. I don't know the exact price point yet. It should be here very soon. And maybe even by the time I finished shooting this video, the change will already be made. But uh, yeah, that should help um, kind of help spread the difference between, you know, the ALPs and the TMGs, just that price difference, make an even bigger difference, especially because, well, I was wrong with where I'd quoted the set of quads initially. But uh, anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into some of the differences here. Uh, again, overall, the general idea is uh, ALP is more mature and more bells and whistles, whereas TMG, uh, a simpler product and a better bang for the buck. Uh, now, in terms of jamming capability, that's always one of the biggest ones. Uh, there's been a lot of testing that's been done over the past couple months. Uh, a lot of it's been posted on RDF. I'll link to you guys in the video description to the, uh, the TMG section where all the test is being posted. And in short, yes, the ALP overall is a more effective jammer, but uh, the TMG is doing really, really good so far. Not as good as I would ultimately like to see, and I know you guys as well, but we're seeing actually a really strong contender. And the strides that I've been seeing them make uh, in beta testing over the past couple months, the guys are doing a really good job of seeing what's going on from the guns and then updating accordingly. And they're doing some different techniques than the ALP does. And so the guys, uh, they're definitely smart guys and they know what they're doing. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm looking at this and saying, this has a lot of promise. Speaking of which, there's some new uh, firmware that's currently in beta that's being tested that they just shared with me today that uh, is uh, actually giving them even better performance than what they already have. So uh, better performance against all guns, including the Dragon Eye gun. So that's really cool to see. Speaking of the Dragon Eye, uh, one thing that they're doing is uh, they're gonna be adding the ability to log the pulse patterns coming in from guns. So let's say they encounter a new gun 
out in the wild that they haven't seen the pulse pattern of before. Uh, they can actually log that, save it, and then that can be sent back to TMG uh, so that they can do their analysis and make sure they can uh, jam it. And if they need to update their jammers, they can do that accordingly without them having to actually go out and get the guns, which is really cool. ALP does have that to a certain extent, but you need special firmware and you have to have the gun on hand and you shoot the ALP to record the pulse pattern and then you send it back. It's not something that you can use while you're driving out on the road. You have to have the gun and you have to have the special firmware loaded. But then when you're driving, there's no logging capabilities. You're just running normal firmware. So that is a difference that's available. Uh, and that's kind of something cool that's coming out from TMG. Now, something I like about the ALP's design is if you take a look at uh, all the plugs in the CPU, when they plug into the CPU, they actually click and lock into place uh, to prevent the cables from accidentally being pulled out. If you look at the uh, TMG's plugs, they pretty much just, uh, let's see, what is this? This is a head. So it plugs into the back of the CPU like this, and then it's actually possible for the plugs to come out. Uh, there was somebody on RDF who was doing some troubleshooting and finding that uh, he was having some issues with one of the heads, and it turns out the cable was actually, um, it was plugged in, but it was partially removed, and he didn't realize it until he was actually poking around in there. And so something that TMG is going to be doing is they're going to be coming out with a new set of cables that will actually click and lock into place. Plus, for those of you guys who already have a TMG, and uh, well, this is a hardware change, it's not just a firmware update, you wouldn't need a new cable, TMG is actually gonna be sending out uh, all new cables to existing customers for free, so no charge, you'll get the updated cables and be able to plug it in and it'll lock into place. So that's actually something really cool to see from TMG. One thing that I like about ALP uh, is that with the heads, if you have a head failure or if the head cable is disconnected, uh, the ALP will actually notify you and say, hey, you know, head disconnected or there's a problem with a certain head and even tell you which port and which head specifically. Warning, automatic sensor check failed, R2. That feature is not available with the TMG, so if you do have a head disconnected, you will have no idea until while well, you're driving down the road and all of a sudden your jammers don't work. For that reason, TMG is actually going to be wanting to uh, update their firmware um, to have the ability to recognize when there's a malfunction with the head or a cable is disconnected. So that's a feature that's going to be coming down the line, which is great to see. Now, in terms of features and functionality, the ALP has, well, way more features available as far as low-speed muting, uh, low-speed jammer disabling, I mean, all sorts of stuff. Um, the TMG, it's, well, really simple. It jams, you can press a button to disable, or it can disable itself. Uh, and there's not a whole lot more than that. You can have unlimited jamming for the test mode for, well, testing purposes, but it doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles. And most people, if you don't need that, you're just like, I just want a jammer that works. I drive, it jams, slow down, the jammer disables. Cool. Okay, there you go. This is gonna be a simpler option, whereas the ALP is designed to have a lot more bells and whistles. Some of the bells and whistles, things like, you know, if the head is disconnected, that's not so much a bells and whistles thing as it is like kind of critical functionality. So I'm glad to see that TMG is gonna be introducing the ability to do a lot of these extra features that, well, are pretty important. In terms of integrating with a radar detector, if you're running a remote mount detector, the ALP has the ability to uh, integrate with a lot of different detectors. It can integrate with the Redenso RCM, uh, with the NetRadar, NetRadar DSP, a lot of different remote M3s like the STIR, STIR Plus, uh, integrate with the V1. It can integrate with a whole ton of different options. Uh, the TMG also has the ability to integrate with, well, their own international heads that aren't coming to the US, um, as well as the Valentine One. Uh, John Boy, uh, he actually has a really nice app, of course, for the V1, and that has the ability to integrate with uh, the TMG as well. So if you want an integrated radar detector and laser jammer, the V1 is, well, that's pretty much your only option with the TMG, but it is available. Front laser. Dra receive only mode. As far as the apps, uh, TMG has their own app. It's available only for Android right now versus uh, ALP. Their app is available for both Android and iOS. And so if you want to update the firmware, um, you have to have an Android phone. I have one as well. I'm an iPhone user, but I have an Android just to run Android apps. And in situations like this where I have to have an Android app in order to update something. Uh, iOS is going to be coming for uh, the TMG as well that's under development, but currently it's Android only. Uh, additionally, the app itself, it is much better designed on ALP. Not only you can do things like, you know, adjust the settings and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, the app itself is much better designed. The TMG, I was trying to update the firmware yesterday. I spent a good, I don't know, 45 minutes or an hour trying to get my phone to connect and I could not for the life of me get it to connect. It was a pain in the butt. Uh, the first TMG that I had, I was able to get it to go, but the second one, I've tested two different systems now, I was just having problems. Eventually I was able to get it, but like, I'm pretty good with tech stuff in general, not the best ever or anything, but I'm pretty comfortable with it. And if I'm having 
this much of an issue with it. I mean, there's so many of you guys who've been complaining about like the Uniden R3 update and the fact that you have to download a separate uh, bin file for the firmware file separate from the update software. And even that loading in the file instead of just having the software do it for you, that's been a big source of confusion or the fact that you have to you know, download drivers or something. This kind of stuff needs to be as simple as possible. And uh, yeah, the update and the Bluetooth stuff here honestly sucks on the TMG. But to be fair, it was really only designed initially for uh, the engineers and the developers to update their product as needed. And uh, it hasn't yet been like made pretty or nice or smooth, you know, for the general public. So that is something that they're gonna be working on. There's even weird things like uh, the firmware and the control firmware. Uh, you need two different apps which look the same and there's just some kind of wonky stuff with uninstalling one and then getting the other. So there's weird kind of behind the scenes stuff that just needs to be smoothed out and that is something that they're working on. But right now there is a pretty big difference in terms of uh, the apps and you know platforms and just the smoothness of how everything is going and the experience overall. If you don't want to use the apps at all, uh, ALP you can update with a USB drive and it's nice if you're browsing the web and you hear there's an update, you can just download it to a USB stick plug it into your ALP in the car and it updates. Pretty simple and straightforward. Um, with the TMG, really your only update option is uh, over USB, or well, sorry, over uh, your phone, which is nice. I mean, I do that a lot of times with my ALP in my car. Uh, I just drive, fire up the app, update while I'm driving, takes a minute or two or whatever, and then it's done and it's pretty cool, you know? So I like having that ability. The TMG one is a little bit more work with button pressing and all that kind of stuff. But again, that is something that they're gonna be working on. So. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be an option. As far as warranties, both of the systems have uh, two-year warranties. If we take a look at the heads, the head size is pretty comparable. The TMG heads are a little bit narrower side to side. The ALP heads are slightly wider. Front to back, the uh, TMG heads are deeper, whereas the ALP heads are a little bit shallower. That can be important maybe for the rear heads if you're installing it kind of uh, under the trunk lip, just above your license plate area. The ALP heads may actually stick out a little bit less just because they're a little bit thinner front to back. But at the same time, the uh, TMGs are a little bit narrower and so maybe you'd have a smaller hole in the front for uh, if you need to install it in your grill. So trade-offs. The TMGs have like this removable faceplate, so in case it gets scratched or damaged, you can uh, pop it off and put another one on if you need. Personally, I don't see that as a huge real world benefit. It's a cool feature, but I haven't really seen many, if any, situations where that's been necessary, but it's a cool idea in case anything ever gets damaged down the line. And yes, behind the removable lens cover, the entire thing is sealed, so uh, no water or snow or anything can get back behind there. It's just a removable protective cover. In terms of head count, uh, traditionally most laser jammers uh, can only support four heads. Uh, the ALP came out and it supported up to five heads, which was really nice because that meant you could have, well, three heads in the front and two heads in the rear. Um, and then people were saying, well, you know, I need maybe more heads in the rear for an SUV or like an Edmonton, there's a lot of drag and eye in the rear, I would need a third head in the rear. Well, they came out with the option of having splitter cables and so now you can have three in the front and three in the rear for a maximum of six heads. I have seen people doing things with like running two transmit heads per side, so like four heads per side, but really I guess it kind of comes down to like six heads total. The uh, TMG natively supports eight heads, so you can have eight in the front, Yes, yeah, you could do eight in the front if you wanted, but really it's more for uh, four in the front and four in the rear uh, if you want a ton of coverage, which can be really helpful. Uh, something else to note is the ALP heads themselves are more sensitive than the TMG heads. Uh, I've seen four different tests so far, and they're all showing that yes, the ALP heads are more sensitive than the TMG. And that can be useful as far as maybe if you've got the heads in less optimal placement locations due to uh, maybe not the greatest places you can install it in your car. Maybe you want to install the heads lower. The ALPs are going to be more sensitive. And so they're going to be a little bit more forgiving towards less than optimal install locations. So that's a plus there for the ALP. That said, the TMG does support more heads. So again, you've got trade-offs and workarounds, you know? Uh, plus the TMG heads themselves are going to be less expensive. Uh, I know the price is potentially going to be changing here soon. As far as the ALP heads, they're 250 per head and then 350 per TX head. So the TMGs, uh, they're 169 at launch uh, and they may be going down, I'm not sure, but even at the current price, they're quite a bit cheaper per head than the ALPs. Now, when it comes to running uh, more than one head per port in the system, uh, they both have splitter cables available. Uh, here's the one for the TMG that I grabbed. Uh, this is the one that plugs into the CPU. And then you've got a splitter like this. Uh, it plugs in and you can plug one head into either side. And this is nice so that if you are needing to uh, run cables through your vehicle or through your firewall, instead of having to run two cables, you can run just one cable and then plug two heads into it. So that's kind of nice. Uh, for the TMG, it's a standard option and well, you've got two ports per side, but four heads per side available. And so, you know, it's just a way to get more than 
two heads per side, you're gonna have to have one of these. Or in my case, I've got a set of duals right now and one splitter cable, so I'd only have to run one cable for two heads. Uh, my last system, I had two cables. With this one, I have one cable and a splitter. Either one works, but it's just a way to simplify having to run your cables and having a smaller hole through your firewall or that kind of stuff, you know? With the ALP, the splitters are more for things like uh, for the rear heads, it only has two ports for the rear, so if you wanna run uh, you know, three heads, you need a splitter, and then another one for the TX head, things like that. Um, for the TMG, it's a more native thing, and you can even run it for your normal heads just to, well, have more heads, or if you want, just to save how many cables you have to run through your car. As far as some of the other kind of more advanced features that I like with the ALP, uh, there's things like a radio mute wire. So when you get shot with laser, the ALP has the ability to uh, mute your car stereo automatically so that you can hear the alert more clearly, which is really cool. You don't have that ability with the TMG. You could do some stuff as far as maybe the app or something. Maybe the app could override your car stereo, but uh, it doesn't have like a radio mute wire built in the way the ALP does. There's also things like an external LED in the ALP. Uh, which I love, I have it in my instrument cluster, and so uh, whenever I get shot with laser, I can see right there the color, I can see red in the front or yellow for rear, so I can tell exactly what direction I'm being shot from, uh, and I really like that feature. Some people even put it kind of on their dash, so uh, with the video, you can see exactly when you're being shot and all, which is really cool. Plus, if you enable pro mode in the ALP, that will show you not only you know where you're being shot from, front or rear, but you can see exactly when the officer is uh, targeting you and when they let off the trigger. It's pretty much when you're detecting laser, the light is on, when you're not, it's off. That's also cool for things like telling, was this just a scatter shot and I just see the LED go, that was it? It wasn't a nice solid like blast of later laser, it just picked up like a really brief shot. You can tell just from that, was a scatter shot or was I the one being targeted directly? You can tell, you know, you JTK and then you can see how long it takes for the light to turn off. So you can tell, okay, now the officer has my speed and then he decided to stop firing. So things like this, as far as situational awareness are really, really helpful and I love that. The external LED plus pro mode. Pro mode, I love that, that's an ALP thing. Now with the TMG, there is no external LED option available. There is on the CPU um, arrows right here that'll light up front or rear, uh, but there's no external LED that you can see right in your field of view. However, TMG let me know that that's something that they're wanting to add with the system, and that's actually gonna be coming here very soon, which is really cool. I don't think pro mode would be an option. I haven't heard anything about it, but I would love to see them do that too. I find it really useful. As far as disabling your jammers, I talked about things like uh, automatic JTK. Um, oh, there was an issue in the last video that I posted where it looks like uh, the four second auto JTK isn't actually four seconds. Apparently this is a known issue and it jams until the thing stops talking, uh, which depending on the gun and how long the announcement is, could be a little bit longer or shorter, but it could be eight seconds instead of four and you think it's four. So this is something that I'm sure they can resolve with the firmware update, but yeah, the ALP, you can just configure what time you want. Uh, the TMG, you can do it now with the TMG remote app, so you have that ability there too. Um, ALP, you can have it uh, slow down, or once you really reach a certain speed, your jammers can automatically disarm. I personally don't like that feature because uh, what happens if you set it maybe to like 35 miles an hour and then you happen to be in an area where it's a 25, you're in a school zone or something, you know, and pff, like, okay, it disabled when you were up the limiter, I don't know. I like having the manual control of when I decide to do it, so that's not a feature that I use, the low speed disabling stuff. Um, but yeah, don't speed in school zones, by the way. That was just maybe a bad example, but in general, you know, I don't like to use that. Um, now, as far as uh, the JTK stuff, oh, what I wanted to say besides the JTK, uh, as far as disabling your jammers, the ALP has some cool options for when you're driving in areas where jammers are illegal, and you wanna make sure that your jammers are not functioning. Uh, you can turn them into purely parking sensors. The TMG does not have parking sensor functionality. With the ALP, when you're in an area where uh, jammers are not allowed and so you wanna go ahead and disable them, you can just switch them to parking sensors and you have the parking sensor functionality. The parking sensor functionality isn't great. I don't actually really like it in practice. I turn it off, I find, uh, the, because it's laser and it depends on light, things like uh, shiny objects, like a chrome bumper in traffic, is a lot more reflective than like a brick wall, and so the distances can vary depending on how shiny the target is and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't work that great, so I personally turn it off, but I think it's a great feature to use if jammers are disabled in your area. Plus, you have uh, the abilities to do things like, uh, you can't turn the, parking sensors back into jammers, like you cannot do that. So if you're in an area where they're really banned, you're passing through there or something, you can have like a special USB stick that uh, if you unplug it, no matter what you do, you cannot 
re-enable your ALPs back into jammers. They are purely parking sensors and that's it. With the TMG, you don't have that ability. You can either turn the jammers on or off and that's about it. And so if you're in an area where they're banned, um, well, don't have jammers in areas like that, but uh, if you're passing through there or something, you do have the ability to force them into parking sensors with the ALP, whereas you don't uh, with the uh, TMGs. So as you can see, there's a number of different features and bells and whistles and things like that. And I know a lot of people, and I guess kind of my take overall on this is like, if I'm gonna be installing a set of jammers in my car, I want them to work well. They need to work consistently and reliably. Like I would rather spend a few extra hundred dollars and know that they're gonna work well. And yeah, to me, I think that's a good thing. I mean, these things, they can be kind of expensive. And then once you add in the cost of installation and the fact that changing systems is not that easy. With the radar detector, you can just pop one off the windshield and put another one on and great. But having to run new cables, uh, potentially drilling new holes in your car, like you're gonna want a system that you can just put in place and it's good to go. And while yes, I do think that today, today the ALP is a better product, um, I think that gap is gonna be getting smaller and smaller as TMG continues to refine their product. And again, those guys have been working really hard on improving their product. And while I don't think it's a better jammer today, Maybe one day it will, but definitely I anticipate the gap getting smaller and smaller, and then that price difference to be something people are gonna look at even more. And so that's, I guess, kind of my overall take today as far as the differences of the jammers. Again, it's very early uh, with the TMGs. They just got released, whereas the ALP has been out for five years now. So very different stages in terms of product maturity and development and history, you know? But nonetheless, that's where everything looks today. And I'm curious to hear from you guys your thoughts as far as, um, do you think it's a good deal to get the TMG? Do you, yeah, do you think it's a good idea? And also, if there's anything that I missed, um, I kind of just went through off the top of my head and I've got a list of ideas that I've been kind of putting together, but I'm sure I missed some stuff too. So if I did and there's some important differences uh, that you guys would like to point out that I didn't cover in this video, please let me know down in the comment area as well. Um, other than that, yeah, that's I guess kind of my initial thoughts early look as far as the differences with TMG versus ALP. ALP, again, better jammer, more refined, more bells and whistles. TMG, a very strong contender up and coming and underdog, I suppose. So good luck to TMG. Continued good job to ALP. And uh, ultimately, I guess you and I, we are winners here as uh, the consumer is having more options and more competition as far as uh, you know what's available now in the laser dreamer market. So yay for us. So <laughs> awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.